Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to our fourth Autumn 2020 update. So here we go again, it's Sunday, and so it's time to bring you another Autumn update. This week we're going to bring a June CT to uh, Autumn data. I shall get on back for you in a minute, explain what you're looking at me, get on with the analogues very shortly. Uh, just to say that the first video released today was our 7am broadcast. We've also got Gaz with his Sunny Roundup coming up around or just after lunch. We'll be live streaming from 6 o'clock. It's a Sunday live stream, so we've got to do some long range for you, uh, and that will be coming up, as I say, from 6 o'clock. We're looking at, you know, data for the rest of summer, autumn, and no doubt winter 21, 22 as well. So that will all be coming up live from 6 p.m. I shall see you there uh, for that one. Uh, thank you so much to Rich for the incredible Autumn 2021 Updates gear. Thank you so much, Rich, for the gear. Absolutely amazing. I love the uh, Autumn Updates gear because the colours gifts because the colours are always so vibrant and, uh, you know, and, and so relaxing and calm. So thank you so much to Rich for the gear. And also thank you so much to Shrine as well, uh, my good friend Shrine Brian, uh, for helping get all of the relevant years together for this update. So it's a joint effort. Thank you so much to Shrine and thank you so much to Rich as well, Richard Trott and Shrine Brian. Um, Thank you so much to both of you for, for the help and, and, you know, the work on this and all of our autumn updates. Amazing, incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, this is going to be quite a long video, of course, as always, with the long range stuff. So this is uh, within the playlist for autumn updates and forecasts that you can find on the Gazweather's YouTube homepage. So you can watch the video on demand whenever you want to or need to. Uh, you know, you'll be able to come back to the channel, select the playlist and uh, watch this and all of the other Autumn Updates videos on demand if you want to do that. Right, at that point, I think we'll turn off the webcam and we'll explain what we're looking at in this one. So here we go, we're going to the CT page at the UK uh, Met Office and we see that June's central income temperature came out at 15.5. 15.5 degrees uh, was the CT for June 2021, which was 1.4 degrees above the 61 to 1990 average. And so very simply, we're going to be looking at autumns following Junes with a CT range of 15.3 uh, to 15.7. So our range is 15.3, 15.7. Any autumn that follows that particular CT range will be included in this package of analogs. So let's do it, uh, shall we? Here we go, this is the first one. Uh, and this is going to be 1836, which is as far back as we can go within the archive at the moment. At, no, every year they seem to go back further and further, but at the moment, as far back as we can go is to 1836. So the very first year within the NOAA archive, uh, you know, uh, a full reanalysis is uh, 1836. It follows the June with a CT range of 15.3 to 15.7. This is how autumn uh, 1836 is looking, then, with below average heights over and to the west and south of the country, above average heights to the north, northwest, income winds from the northeast. That looks like a cold and wet autumn for 1836. Our next autumn is going to be 1837. Should I turn the webcam on while I'm doing this? Why not? That's a little bit of interest, doesn't it, I suppose, <laughs> if you can see Gab. Right, so uh, here we go then, or maybe you'd rather not do, you know, I don't know. Uh, I probably shouldn't ask that question, should I? Uh, I'm not sure I have a face, really, for high def. Uh, right, so here we go then. Uh, our next year is just one year on, 1837, uh, following that June season range of 15.3 to 15.7, with below average heights to our east. I'm not going to be giddy on this, I'm not going to be giddy. Uh, and above average heights out to the west. And so this looks like a rather dry water. It's not as unsettled, but it is a bit on the cool side with winds probably coming in from a bit of a northerly uh, direction. So a rather colder autumn, uh, that, but not as wet. We've got 1850 uh, showing up next. This looks cold and unsettled. Again, we're blocking to our west and north and below average heights to our east and south. And again, in come those winds from a north, northeast direction. That looks like a pretty cold and wet autumn to me in 1850. Our next autumn is 1865. This looks like, this looks, look, this looks like a drier and warmer autumn with above average heights over and slight to the north of the country, below average heights to our west. It looks like we'd be drawing in the wind from more of an east-southeasterly type direction with that. So I reckon that could be a drier 
and warmer autumn in 1865. Our next autumn, just one year on again, 1866. And this was relatively dry and potentially a little bit uh, warmer as well, with the above average heights extending through northern and western parts of Europe. So it should be a relatively settled autumn. That may be getting colder later. It'll be pulling in the wind from the northeast. Our next autumn is 1868. This follows a very hot summer. This one has uh, high pressure to the north around Iceland and Greenland, and low pressure to south winds in from an east or east direction. I think that's a, quite a cold autumn, actually, following a hot uh, summer. So we have a hot summer in 1868, and then I think the autumn goes a lot cooler. Our next uh, our next autumn is going to be 1887, following a June city range of 15.3 to 15.7. This one with uh, high pressure out to our west, low pressure across northern and western parts of Europe. This was like quite a cold and wet autumn as well. A little bit of a trend, I think, uh, with these earlier autumns cold and wet with that very active hurricane season in 1887 as well interesting a cold and wet autumn that one uh next up we have 1889 this is a rather drier but potentially still quite cool autumn with higher pressure to uh the north blocking uh around scandinavian svobod and also in the north <laughs> as well, with a below average heights to the south of the country. I'm so sorry, everyone. I don't know what that was. Our wings are in from the east. So uh, that's a dry and potentially rather colder uh, autumn, I think, in 1889. Not 1893 shows that this is definitely a recurring pattern, isn't it? This idea of above average heights uh, to our west and northwest and below average heights to our east and southeast. Again, winged in from the north northeast so quite quite cold with a lot of these autumns and unsettled as well 1893 is another one that is doing that our next autumn is 1899 this is a drier warmer autumn with above average heights high pressure over the uk and much of western europe below average heights pushed off up to the north jet stream is pushed northwards as well a lot of dry and pretty warm weather mild weather certainly and maybe early on quite warm weather in 1899. Now, you have a very long gap, then, uh, of 31 years. So, the next time uh, we have an autumn with a June city range of 50.3 to 15.7 is in 1930. Uh, this cold, wet autumn as well, with below average heights, low pressure to our east and northeast over Scandinavia, above average heights around Greenland and blocking into the Arctic, winds in from the north. That's a cold and wet autumn. I think, in 1930. Our next autumn is 1933. This follows a hot summer. And this is a relatively dry autumn as well. With So it's a hot and dry summer in 1933. And then we have a, a, a warm, uh, or a reasonably mild anyway, a dry autumn, I think, with low pressure to our south, high pressure, sticking around the country. Easterly winds, so past colder by November, but certainly early on in the autumn, I think there's quite a bit of dry and warm weather. Uh, pretty long gap again, through to 1946. The autumn of 1947, again following a pretty hot summer, uh, shows above average height centred over western parts of Europe. A lot of dry and uh, warm weather, or mild weather, and times quite warm weather in the autumn of 1947. Autumn 1949 uh, shows up next, following June city range of 15.3 to 15.7. This one with high pressure towards our east northeast, quite deep low pressure to our west southwest. This is a warm autumn, and especially so. In September, September 1949 is exceptionally uh, mild, exceptionally warm, actually. Um, the autumn does go more and more unsettled, though, with that low pressure in the Atlantic. So a warm, wet autumn uh, with that one. Quite a long gap again, uh, then, through to 1966. This is a, just a very unsettled autumn, quite a wet autumn, with high pressure, again, out to our west and northwest, low pressure across northern and Western Europe, 1966 is a very wet year. The autumn of 1966 is also very wet. And, of course, it, it contains the Aberfan disaster in uh, October 1966, where it's so, where there's so much rainfall. And we have that terrible mudslide that, uh, you know, that goes on top of the school and, unfortunately, does kill um, so, some children. And uh, there are fatalities with that disaster, uh, unfortunately. And the weather did play a part in that. Definitely. Uh, another long gap then through to 1982 with lots of low pressure in the North Atlantic 
And again, in come West. This is just a warm or a mild and wet autumn in 1982. Very unsettled autumn in 1982. 1992 is also quite unsettled with, again, below average heights over and to the east of the country, above average heights in the North Atlantic winds again in from a westerly direction. So, so that's another mild autumn. It does have quite a cold spell in October of 1992. I remember that quite well. But September is, is like... Is it's like very unsettling. It's quite quite wet, but also near normal with temperatures. And then November is wet and mild. Uh, they have uh, quite a biggish gap through to 2004. So the next time we have a June city range of 50.3 to 50.7 is 2004. This is generally a mild and quite dry autumn, although it does have a wet October. So um, this autumn has above average heights sort of over and to the west of the country. has like an Atlantic driven flow. It has a warm and dry September and a mild and dry November. In between, it has a wet October, though. There is a wet October in 2004. Just one year on to 2005, this is a warm autumn, 2005, with above average height sitting to our east and drawing up the wind from the south to southwest. So, uh, Vision has a very warm September, but it does get increasingly wet. October uh, 2005 is also very warm too. Most of November is very mild, but in the final sort of week to 10 days of November 2005, there's a dramatic switch and, uh, you know, we pull in much colder northern winds. So, so the second half of November 2005 does go dramatically colder with a lot of uh, snow showers and hard overnight frost up what had previously been an exceptionally uh, mild autumn. So that's a bit of a strange one in 2005. And then the final autumn for this package of analogs, the uh, last time it had a June city range of 15.3 to 15.7, was indeed just last autumn, 2020. And this one showing quite an anticyclonic signal um, across much of uh, northern Europe and out into the Atlantic as well. There's a bit of, there's quite a lot of low pressure towards Greenland and Iceland, but that's a relatively quieter, but also slightly colder autumn in 2020. Right, let's start putting all of that together then. So it's all September's combined are looking following a June city range of 15.3 to 15.7. Relatively anticyclonic for these September's with above average heights to the north, below average heights to the south, bringing in wind from the east. Probably quite a dryish and warmish sort of signal actually for a lot of those September's. Colder and wetter, I think, for October. It's how all October's combined are looking, with the above average heights again away to our north and northwest, and below average heights to our east southeast, and income of wind from incomes of the wind, I should say, from like an east or northeast direction. That's a wetter but also rather colder autumn. And then in uh, all November's combined, following a June season range of 50.3 to 15.7, uh, looking colder still, mid Atlantic ridge going towards Greenland, below average heights. It's extending through northern West Europe and down comes like a northerly wind. So you could envisage that a lot of those Novembers are contain pretty cold and potential, pretty cold weather and, and wintry potential definitely there with a lot of those uh, autumns in November. All autumns combined look like that. Generally, we do have the uh, signal here for the Mid Atlantic Ridge. So there it is. We've got the Mid Atlantic Ridge to our north and northwest, going towards green with below average heights to our east and southeast. And so winds in from a north north east direction a lot of those autumns are showing blocking uh and also the potential for cold weather especially uh later on in them let's just narrow things down to look at the years after 1950 the most relevant years to the uh sort of modern climate this does narrow things down a lot we just have 1966 1982 1992 2004 2005 and 2020 get a more anti-cyclonic signal with these uh septembers so all septembers combined following a june season range of 15.3 to 15.7 post 1950 builds up the heights from the south we turn drier and also potentially uh warmer in these septembers with below pressure uh up to the north Winds seen from southwest. So there is an Atlantic signal for the northern half of the country, but generally it's a much more anti cyclonic signal, a drier and warmer signal, therefore, for those Septembers. All Octobers combined go wetter um, and potentially still quite cold, blocking is centred around Greenland with the below average heights over UK and much of Western Europe. You can envisage those uh, Novembers a lot of the time, uh, those Octobers, I should say, a lot of the time are going to be uh, wet and, make, and, you know, with so much blocking around Greenland, there is some cold potential with those Octobers. Octobers as well. 
and then all November's combined reverting to a milder sort of signal um, a more westerly with high pressure to our west southwest low pressure to our north northwest and winds in from uh, the west so definitely milder uh, a much milder signal for those uh, November's more Atlantic driven not necessarily overly unsettled but definitely a lot milder uh, and this is how all autumns combined finally are looking from the June CC range of 15.3 to 15.7 post-1950. Overall, still unsettled with these autumns below average heights to the north. That is primarily, though, down to, uh, to the north of the country, but that is primarily down to what's happening in October because September and November actually have like more of an anticyclonic signal with this. But October uh, switches to being a, being a very wet signal with these, uh, with these um, years after 1950. And so I'm not sure how seriously we should take that overall, um, you know, uh, with, with, with that analogue for the autumn, because I think that is skewed a lot, actually, by, by what's going on in the Octobers there. But it does make quite a big difference this time. So a lot of the time we look at these years after 1950, and it's surprisingly uh, surprising how how little difference it makes. You know, you still get the general sort of signal. And a lot of the time, and it's still, you know, towards colder weather, which you would not expect after 1950 necessarily. But occasionally you do get uh, a set that crops up like this. And um, this definitely is a, is a warmer set, substantially so, for these autumns after 1950 compared to uh, compared to the overall package of analogs going all the way back into the 1800s. Okay, with that, we're done for this fourth Autumn 2021 update. So if you enjoyed this video, please can you smash your like button to make sure you subscribe to our channel. You'll see future weather content, including future long-range uh, content, of course. And uh, tell your friends and family, everybody else, who subscribe to us too. If you think they'd be interested in what we're doing here on the channel, push in the envelope, push in the boundaries, and experiment, experimental forecasting. So if you think, uh, you know, if you would be interested, then, uh, then tell them to subscribe as well. Um, and drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Uh, now, next week's uh, uh, autumn update, the fifth autumn update, is going to be like a direct follow-on from this, and we'll look at England West precipitation uh, for June. So that's going to be quite an interesting one. I'll say that will be coming up for you. Uh, that will be coming up for you next Sunday. Uh, this video is within the Autumn Updates playlist on the, uh, on the YouTube homepage, so you can watch the video whenever you want on demand, and uh, that's absolutely great. We will be releasing our Autumn 2021 forecast on Sunday, the 29th of August. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, just next month, we're getting... <laughs> it's, it's a bit of scary to think, but we're getting ever closer to the Autumn forecast, and then, of course, after that, to Winter Updates. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I think I better stop there, don't you? We're going to be back later on, guys. We'll be sending Roundup. We'll be live-streaming after 6 o'clock. I'll see you live uh, at 6. But for this Autumn... 2020 update. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.